Hello and welcome to Second Drafts, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Today on Second Drafts, we'll be going over how to customize your HTML file so that it looks the way you want it to. If you didn't see the video on cleaning the code from your HTML file, be sure to check it out. It's crucial to clean your HTML file first so that there's no errant code that will make your Kindle file look odd. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure that you know that I'm not a coder. Before getting into this myself, I had no experience with HTML. There are tons of resources online which can give you tips on coding to get things looking the way you want. Most of the time, the hardest part is copying and pasting the code in, then opening the file to make sure the changes were made correctly. It may seem daunting at first, but we're going to make it as easy as possible for you so that you can take the guesswork out of making your Kindle file. Okay, let's get started. Alright, first thing you'll want to do is open the HTML file we've been working on in Sigil. To do that, you can right-click on it, hover over Open With, then select Sigil if it's in the list available. If not, open Sigil first, go to File, hover over Add, and click Existing Files at the top. Now you just need to find the HTML file and double-click it to add it into Sigil. If you go this route, you'll want to take the additional step of removing the default HTML file that comes with Sigil when opening it this way. To do this, on the right side in the text section, right-click on the section file you see here, click Delete, and then in the new window, click Delete Marked Files. Now, make sure you have the HTML file of your book selected here, and that you are currently in Code View. If it looks like Notepad++ did, then you're in Code View. You can also check these buttons up here. The one on the left, that looks like a book, is aptly named Book View which can show you a little of what your book will look like in an EPUB reader. And on the right, with the angle brackets, is Code View, which is what we'll be using most of the time. Once you're in Code View, the first thing we'll be doing is fixing any special characters that might not have translated over into Sigil. If you see a black a diamond with a question mark in the middle like this, it means that something wasn't working with Sigil's coding language and needs to be fixed manually. It can be different things, so we don't just want to replace all of them with one symbol, otherwise it might not make sense. So first, highlight, right-click, and copy that question mark symbol. Now hit Ctrl F on your keyboard to bring up the Find window at the bottom of the screen. Paste the question mark symbol into the Find box. Now, along the top of Sigil, hit the button with the Omega symbol. This is the Insert Special Character button, which brings up a helpful box of different types of characters you may or may not recognize. If you first select the Replace field, or anywhere where you can insert text, and then click on one of the characters, it will insert that character. So, for my text, the first part that didn't come over was an ellipsis. So I can highlight the question mark symbol, then click on the ellipsis, and it will replace the question mark with an ellipsis for me. The next one is a copyright symbol, so I just have to do the same for it, but click the copyright symbol instead. Now I just have to go through the document by clicking Find to find all of the question marks and replace them with the appropriate symbol. It's best to also do this while following along with your original document, as, if you're like me, you might not remember exactly what you put there in the first place. Now, once you have that done, we can set up how we want our book to look. 
First, we'll change how general paragraphs look, as they will be the most plentiful in our document. What I usually do is have the first paragraph in a chapter, or after a break, have no indent, and then all other paragraphs have a slight indent. Since more paragraphs will have an indent than the other way around, we can set that up first. Now we'll want to set up our style sheet. What is a style sheet? A style sheet is usually found at the top of an HTML document and determines what paragraphs and other things will look like. If you recall when we were cleaning our HTML document, it was the first thing we deleted. Now we'll be adding it back in, but this time it will be cleaner and more concise. So first, go to the top of the HTML document and find the head tags. Remember the ones I told you to leave in before? If you don't have these right after the HTML tag and before the body tag, quickly add those in now. Now leave a few spaces in between the opening head tag and create a style opening and closing tag, like seen here, with a few spaces in the middle as well. Now, in the middle of these tags, type the letter P, then a period, and then whatever you want this style to be named. You want to keep it short and simple, and it needs to be all one word so that it's easier for you to know what it is. It can't start with a number, but you can have numbers in it. I'm going to go with S-01. Now, put a space, then a curly brace. In here is where we put what we want this style to look like. As mentioned earlier, we're making a style with indents. So type in text, then put a dash, type indent, then put a colon, then type zero, period, two, five, I, N, then put a semicolon. With this code, any paragraph that starts like this code you see on the screen will have a slight indent. With any style, you can have a lot of different options of how you want it to look. They just have to be separated with a semicolon, and the style has to end with a curly brace. Now, we just need to change the paragraphs so that they have that indent. So, we can do this very easily with Find and Replace. Hit Ctrl F on your keyboard to open the Find window again. In Find, type in a normal paragraph marker as you see on the screen. Then, in Replace, type in an opening angle bracket, then the letter P. Hit space on your keyboard, then type class. Put in an equals sign, quotation mark, then type the name of your style. Add another quotation mark, and finally put in a closing angle bracket. Now hit replace all. This will replace all paragraph markers with the one that uses our recently created style with indents. If you want to check on how that looks, you can click on Book View, and it will show you. However, as that's the only current style, there's not much to look at. So let's add some more styles. The next thing we can do is make another paragraph style for paragraphs without indents, specifically for those ones after a chapter starts and after a break. Just make a new line in the Style section, then highlight the first style, copy it, and paste it onto the new line. Now all we need to do is rename the style. Continuing with my style names, this one will be S-02, and then change the indent amount to zero. And now we have a new style. The last thing to do with this is go through and change the first paragraph of each chapter and the first paragraph after a break to this new style. As you can see here, 
All you have to do is change the class name in the paragraph to the new style name, and it's done. Hopefully you've marked your breaks with something easy, like an ellipsis. Otherwise, you'll have to manually search the document for them. If you need an ellipsis to use in the Find function, just click that Insert Special Character button we used before to get one easily. Now we have 90% of our book coded and looking the way we want. The rest should be a breeze. Next, I'm going to start flavoring my text at certain points. I like to have my ellipsis breaks be centered and bold, so I'll get them next. Same as before, I make a new style following the same naming convention, but this time, in the curly brace, I'll put text, then a dash, type a line, insert a colon, type center, insert a semicolon, put in a space, type font, put in a dash, type weight, put in a colon, type bold, and put in another semicolon. Now with this style, as you can see by the code, it will be both bold and centered. Now I just apply it to the ellipsis breaks, and that's done. Next, I'll get the chapters. For chapters, we'll be using H3 tags, which are heading tags, instead of regular paragraph tags. In the style sheet, it still functions the same, with one exception. Instead of it starting with the letter P, then a period, it starts with H3, then a period, then the name of the style. For chapters, I want them to be centered, so I'll copy and modify the last style I made. And I also want there to be a page break before the start of a new chapter all the time. To do that, I'll type page, put in a dash, type break, put in another dash, type before, put in a colon, type always, and then put in a semicolon. Now I'll just add this to all the chapters, and that's done. One thing to note with page breaks is that you won't see them in Sigil's book view, so we won't be able to see them until we've actually created the Kindle file, but as long as everything is spelled right, it should be fine. Now we have practically all of the book coded. With what we've gone over here now, this should be enough for you to go about adding your own styles and applying them to the text. You can have your text be bold, blue, or you can change the margins so that the paragraphs and sentences are spaced differently. There are tons of resources online that can show you how to make the text the way you want. Usually the hardest it gets is copying and pasting. You just have to make sure to separate each formatting with a semicolon. The fun thing with style sheets is that if you make any changes to the styles now, they will automatically apply to all paragraphs marked with the class name you gave it. If you are ever unsure of how it will look, just hit the book view button and it will show all the updates you've made immediately after you've made them. The only thing it doesn't show are the page breaks as mentioned before, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Keep going back and forth until you're satisfied with how the book looks, and once as you are, we're all done this step. Oh, and if you're wondering about adding images or anything like that, don't worry. We'll be covering more on that in a later episode. So now you should have a better grasp on how to use HTML to customize your Kindle file. You'll probably want to return to this step if something doesn't look the way you want after we've created the file, which we'll be covering in another episode. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, and remember that Second Drafts has everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way.
Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.